Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, welcome to, I guess, the Ken Frederick Podcast, <laughs> even though he's not here this evening. Uh, this is episode 73, Logan Spoiler Movie Review. Um, I guess I have to read all these websites that Ken normally reads. Uh, check us out at kfpodcast.com, Facebook at kfpodcast, Twitter at, at Ken Fred Podcast, and Instagram at Ken Frederick Podcast. Thanks for all the uh, YouTube uh, views lately and all the uh, the subscribes were up about what are we now Justin 106 106 nice. so what is the YouTube domain YouTube is YouTube at Ken Fred podcast all right and I have to stick up for Ken it's the Twitters it's the Twitters that's right or is that so Jericho? Ken is not with us this evening he is working his new job and we saw a movie without him so this is the first podcast we've never done one without either me you or Ken, right? You've never done one without me. We never done one without you. No, well, we can't because yeah. we use your stuff, so it's pretty good one. Yeah. But yeah, he's not with us tonight, but you know, the show must go on. Separation anxiety, guys? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah. So we have. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we have Justin over there. Hey, everybody. We have Lance. Hey. And we have Brock, as always. Hi. And you have me, the bald man. So the we other just. Bald man. The other bald man. So we just saw Logan. And we are trying to emotionally recover <laughs> from the stress of that two and a half hours of that movie. And we thought we'd uh, do a little review for you first without spoiling it. A um, little non-spoiler review. So why don't we just kick that off here with Mr. Brock and tell us a little bit about the movie. As a movie, I'm sure it's very good by some people's standards. But as a superhero movie, it's, it's a downer. And I thought it was too long. Uh, the visuals were good. The fight scenes were brutal. Very. The acting was really good. But as far as the story goes, it's kind of... It's just a downer. That's all I can really say without spoiling anything. And I don't, I don't really think saying it's a downer is a spoiler. Because if you watched any of the trailers, they pointed to that direction. That that's how the movie was right. going to be. And that... I, from the beginning, when that first trailer came out with that... The Johnny, Johnny Cash. Johnny you can't Cash have a song. happy movie with Johnny Cash no. dying from cancer. And <laughs> yeah. I, I was worried from the from the moment that trailer came out that this was going to be what the movie was. I started to get a little hope last week when all the critics started seeing it when they mm. first released the um, uh, the world premiere because it has like a ninety five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Everybody is raving about this movie, and. From a, if you want to go and talk about critics and technicality and yeah. the aspects of film, it was beautifully shot. Yes. It was very well acted. Mm -hmm. The story made sense, but as Brock mentioned, it was a downer. And one of the things that, that I had a problem with, and I think you mentioned this when we were on the way out, there are a lot of questions left unanswered. Yeah, yeah definitely. And knowing that this is supposed to be Hugh Jackman's last rodeo as Logan, if that stays true, I'm irritated that we're never going to get the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, You might get the answers to the question, but they're going to be in the form of a cheesy reboot. Well, yeah, that's, that's true. That's or flashback a possibility. sequences. Right. <laughs> what do you think about it, Lance? Um, I'm sort of a Brock. I go to superhero movies because I want to see superheroes, I want to see action, I want to see fun, positive things. Mm. This was none of those. Yeah. Um, you're right, cinematic, cinematog cinematography, great. Film aspects, great. You had to re rely on the acting more because you're not dealing with the action or much of a plot, you know, action-oriented plot. Mm. But um, as a comic book guy, it's a snoozer. And I think they missed their, their target audience. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it was a little slow too. The the pacing was off. During you know during the battle scenes, it it would it would pick up, but then all the the stuff to get from fight to fight, it slowed way down. It mm -hmm. was a drama with action, not an action with drama. Yeah. yeah I well, I, I think that, and my my review of it is, I think that this director, because I've heard some interviews with him, is he wanted to make this like new genre of superhero movie where. 
it's not tight and spandex and special effects. It's gritty, it's dark, it's rated R, and this is how... Because that's what all the reviews that I've read about it are. This is how a superhero movie should be. This is what this is realistic. This is real life. And like you said, I don't want that. So from an, an art perspective, yes, beautifully shot, good acting, you know, good choreography, all that stuff was good. Hugh Jackman is always good. Pat, you know, Patrick Stewart was good. All that was fine. And I could see God, if you look terrible. I could see if you walk yeah. into this movie and you're no makeup at all, and you're not an X Men fan or Wolverine fan. You're like, well, that was you know that was good if you like blood and gore, which there's a ton. But yeah, as a Wolverine and an X Men fan, Wolverine to me, even back when he was, had his own book, was never this violent either. No. I mean, like. It was cartoony violent. Right. You know what I mean? Because Wolverine is a superhero. He wore a yeah. colorful outfit. He was a superhero. Like he'd cut people's guns in half. And yeah, stuff, cutting not their guns head. and doing stuff <laughs> like that. Which, you know, and then he would fight like monsters and robots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which I thought in this movie, since he was going to fight the Reavers, that you were going to see more. A lot more cybernetics. Cybernetic yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But God, it was extremely violent. And don't <laughs> bring children to no, see this movie. Oh, God, no. This isn't Deadpool where like. You could bring them, and maybe the one sex scene, you cover their eyes, and the violence, and that was a couple swear well, words. But when there wasn't violence, there wasn't there wasn't swearing. There was tons of intravenous drug use. I mean... Oh, tons of stuff. There was so much bad elements to it. Mm -hmm. We're like, do not bring a child to see this movie. It's yeah. just not appropriate. And I don't know why you have to do that to a, an X-Men movie. It has to go that dark. It was really dark. I think they're but, just trying to be the anti-Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. That's that's their goal now, is to be the, the exact opposite side of the coin of Marvel totally, Studios. Totally, because the director even came out and said, you should only have one or two superheroes in a movie. Too many more makes it a bad movie. That's a direct shot mm -hmm. at Avengers, Infinity War, and all that coming out. Yeah. And all these un Rotten Tomatoes people hate Avenger movies. Yeah. They hate Civil War. They hate Batman or Superman. Mm -hmm. So th they're all over this going. This so they're is pandering to the critics instead pandering. of the fans. Exactly. Well, because, I mean, okay. Mathematically, yes. More characters means you have to be better at your better at doing your thing. Exactly. So, but, you have to write them well. But to your point, you know, this is a brand new genre of, of, uh, of superhero movie. Watchmen was dark. Watchmen was violent. But Watchmen was good. Watchmen my, was really mind. good. Yes, it, you're, you're right. It had, but you know what? It had violent aspects to it in certain spots, but it wasn't so overdone. Right. I mean, some of these scenes, it's like, I'm like, God, how many? Justin even said, how many men did they bring? I mean, he's already went through fifty guys. <laughs> well, and, and huh. Laura X twenty three. Yeah. She was. I'm like, okay, like you stabbed eighty five people through the head. Like we get it. Is this scene over yet? You know. Mm -hmm. I was talking with Justin. I'm like, this is what would happen if Quentin Tarantino did a superhero movie. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. So I, I just picked up IMDb and looked a little bit. So director was James Mangold. Yeah. Now I understand why he used the Johnny Cash music. He also directed Walk the Line. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. Walk. Makes sense. You know, he's he's directed some good movies. Walk the Line, Three Ten to Yuma. Yeah. Um, he directed the the Wolverine. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, and like you said, cinematically, I don't have a problem with yeah, him. I have no. a problem with his vision of right. the movie. Yeah, let it me say this. Movie. I would have a... If this movie was not Marvel Wolverine at all, and this was just a story about an enhanced person that was a soldier, and there was other people, you just tell the same story, I'm fine. It's yeah. a sci-fi rated R movie, I'm fine. But you think about, um, it's a pretty old movie, but Starman. Yeah. Random enhanced alien, right? Tons of drama, tons of emotion, mm -hmm. and it worked. Yeah, this is an ex assassin who's enhanced, and now he's a daughter. And you tell that same story, which he could have done that movie. You didn't need to make this a Marvel Wolverine movie because it just went off the the charts for me. It was just rough. So let's get into some spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Go ahead there, Brock. Some spoiler reviews. What are some things, a couple stuff that you were really stunned by or, you know, whatever. Well, I kind of predicted that everybody was going to die. Yeah. And that ended up being the case. I was hoping it wouldn't be. But look. They went with that route. They went that route. You know, Charles died and then, spoiler alert, Logan dies. Yeah. A la Rogue Squad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Rogue One, excuse Rogue me. Rogue One. But just back to the violence, it, it was just so, so much that it, it wasn't necessary. 
Yeah, it was like we got the blessing to do a radar our movie. Let's say the f word as much as we can, mm-hmm. and then let's stab every cut part. off as many heads as we can. Yeah, yeah. Let's stab every part of the human body. It's gonna oh, get. Oh, and, and if you uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, you're fine. They had to show tits. I was telling yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's rated R. Got to bring some yeah. tits out. Yeah. <laughs> Just pointless. Obligatory too. tit scene for no yeah. reason. It might as well have been the shower scene in Porky's. Yeah. <laughs> or it yeah. was Friday Thirteenth when the girls change and yes. yes. Jason beats her face in it afterwards. Uh, you know, but. I mean, it was just very predictable as it was going. It was very emotional, which, you know, I like in movies, but not, like we keep saying, not superhero movies. Yeah. Um, so depressing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't understand why they have to take these movies and make them so depressing. Nothing yeah. good can happen to the X-Men. No. Nothing good. You, there's nothing good. Everyone's dead. Everyone died. Professor X killed a bunch of people. You don't know what happened. Yeah, they left and, that hanging. Well, but, okay, every, every superhero... I mean, every cinematic or serial type of story. You have the rise, you have the fall, you have the resolution. Yeah. This one was just fall, fall, fall. Yeah. yeah. There was no rise. That, yeah. yeah. No, nothing. I mean, because from the beginning of the movie, he's he's obviously dying from the adamantium poisoning. Now, which... l- let's touch on that for a second. Because Justin asked me this when we walked out. He said, oh, the adamantium was killing him. I don't understand how that's possible. Because adamant... Remember, if you remember old Wolverine, when he... The reason he was able to survive the adamantium in his body was because of his healing factor. Mm-hmm. And remember when he lost his metal, it was like 50% of his healing factor was going towards keeping the adamantium yeah, right. from, from dying. Because remember mm-hmm. when he lost it, Magneto he, ripped he turned it out. He into like some kind of creature. I, I mean, he got run over by a truck in one scene and stood right back up yeah. and his bones popped into place. Yeah. He was like unbelievably healing, mm-hmm. but he had bone claws. I don't understand why all of a sudden the adamantium's beating the healing factor. I think it's an age thing. Like he's he's gotten he's so old now. Like he's by their timeline wasn't in the uh, X Men Origins movie. He wasn't he in the Civil War. Well, yeah, it and was he, eight, eighteen. I'm gonna have to look. This we up did this once before. Me. We did no, this once before no. we showed a picture. It was, it was later than that because based on based on the the movie where um, they found where where it, a, um, Wolverine was in that dam. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, I think that was supposed to be like in the, eight, between the 80s and the 90s. In the dam. What do you mean in the dam? In uh, uh, Alkali uh, Lake. Al- yeah, Alkali Lake. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. that's when he got the Adamantium. Yeah. He was born. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Right, X-Men right. Origins Wolverine. Yeah, him yeah. and Sabretooth are in the Civil War. Because they're fighting for the North. You're right. As adults. As adults. And then they're they're in like colonial times. And then they're fighting in the Civil War. I think, I think when you looked at it, when by the time X-Men... The movie comes out in 2000. He's like 140 years old Mm -hmm. already. So I don't understand why you tack on another 30 years and then he's way over the hill. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. This is saying the 1880s. Yeah. Early 1880s. When you go in, like, the, um, when the Days of Future Past came out, that was like 2011 or something like that, Mm -hmm. 2010. He, he wasn't that old, so why yeah. 20 years later is he so old that he's... And so scarred. And so and, scarred. Like, yeah. The only thing I can figure is they, they talk about, you know, the, the was it Westchester incident? Right. Yeah. Something happened there. Something happened there. And, and the only thing I can figure is that between when we left Days of Future Past <laughs> and 2029, Nothing there was some happen. kind of crazy war, and the Westchester incident was probably, like, the final final charge yeah. that Charles ended up killing people when he didn't mean to but he had to to see to I think Wolverine or... actually did and Charles has put that in his head that he did it to protect his own feelings kind of like the old man love yeah. comic book story yeah. yeah that's my theory I mean they don't really say and I don't think they ever will but because that's how it went down in the comics he was mind control he yeah. was Mysterio made him think that all these like soldiers, which always bothered me, it made him look like that there was all these super villains, yeah, like mm-hmm. Craven the Hunter and all the and mm-hmm. Sabretooth and Omega Red, and then Wolverine kills everybody because you know his senses can't get past Mysterio's <laughs> drugs and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, yeah, well, but that's Mysterio's deal. Uh huh. He's he, he's he alters reality. And the the thing, not to harp on Old Man Logan, but the thing that always pissed me off is the arrogance that Wolverine could take out the entire X Men roster. Well, yeah, uh, well, they weren't fighting own. back. <laughs> After he killed two of them, wouldn't you be like, okay? Well, that, they showed that. I'm just gonna stand there and go like this. No, no, no. We're your friends. Stop. Yeah. Like, and then that's when he woke up as he like killed Jubilee. or I something. I would think like. that some of the other ones would have been like. <laughs> 
screw this. You know, I'm knocking his head off. We're going to do something against him. It's just that that was right around the time when they were writing Wolverine as he's the nothing can stop Wolverine. Yeah. Wolverine takes on the Marvel Universe. Wolverine uh-huh. is is the best. He's a, he's the best at what he does. So they write Old Man Logan that he wipes out the X-Men like yeah. that. You know, like, okay. I think that's pro- that's my theory. And again, it's just total BS coming from my brain. But it's probably you're probably right. Isn't it so bad that like Days of Future Past when it ends leaves you with such a good feeling yeah. that it's like Gene's back, Scott's back, mm-hmm. he's back. We can maybe have another good X Men movie mm-hmm. with that cast. Everybody's there. Let's make a good movie. Let's put the Wolverine costume on along Cyclops and everybody yep. and do something good. They're all dead. Wolverine <laughs> killed them. <laughs> Professor X is an old crazy person. <laughs> and Steve Merchant is Caliban. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. All right. Poor That's Caliban. What... Oh. <laughs> well, and I'm sorry. Albinos don't burn in the sun. Was Caliban the... doesn't burn in the sun. He's I not mean, a vampire. Was... Yeah. 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 Was he a that was, Morbius? Or? That was some kind of it, liberties. It, it, they it, took. Was, it was it was a convenient a convenient plot twist to torture yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I like the actor that they had play him in the Apocalypse movie. I don't know why they didn't stick with yeah, him. Yeah, they've changed yeah. Caliban. I think three times. <laughs> yeah, there's there, been well, three different actors. Yeah, there's been three different actors that have played him. And the Caliban from the previous movie. I thought was sort of cool. He had that sort of fixer aspect to him. Yeah. Whereas this guy is the sniveling Caliban from X Factor. That yeah. You were like, ah. I mean, there's been away. so many versions of Caliban. Yeah, and his powers were way off too. He didn't need to sniff clothes like a dog. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just he could sense them. But I did like the I did like the line where he's like, "Well, I'm just a glorified truffle pig or mutant truffle pig." <laughs> and he was he had a, other abilities too at certain times. I mean, remember yeah. huge Caliban mm-hmm. and X Force, where he's mm-hmm. like a big giant Hulk like kind of creature. Uh-huh. Just an odd choice, Caliban. I guess he fit because he's a tracker. And yeah, he, that's... You know, he fit the story. Yeah. You know, but that was... I don't know. There was a lot of strange things like that in, in that movie. I mean... Well, you also look at him and they talk about how he worked with the anti-mutant forces. Yeah. And... Like he's yeah, a traitor. Right. Everybody had, like, done bad stuff. That's right. why the three yeah. of them were all together. Yeah. Well, I, I think that might have been the director's way to actually stick with that realistic, flawed character or yeah. sort of plot vehicle. Yeah. And let me just say, poor Richter, who maybe had a chance to get in like the X Force movie, the New Mutants movie. Yeah. They stick him in this crap as a little kid that like like I like Richter. Richter's a cool character. And they just then there he goes. I mean that's yeah, you know, that's him. I don't know who the who was the kid that looked like kind of like Gary Coleman? <laughs> that poor little fat kid. Oh, oh, running through the forest. Yeah. Running through the, the forest. That was the best scene in the movie. That's the only time I watched. Watch, watch him trying to truck through the forest <laughs> no. while soldiers are chasing that him. That was great. <laughs> he had elect- electricity powers. Electricity yeah. powers. Yeah, and then they had like Nature Girl. Yeah. With her nature. There was probably a lot. Like, I'm sure if you looked at that, like, dais that he had with all the names in it. Yeah. You would have saw, like, out. who fathered the, who, who was the DNA. Right. I'm sure that'll be like bonus features or something oh, like sure. that, you know. Except for the fact that I'll never bother to see the bonus features. You know, yeah, I'm never gonna watch this I don't, movie again. I don't, don't want to watch it either. That's the thing that really says something about a movie is like Deadpool was rated R. They did all this stuff on it. Every time Deadpool's on HBO, I watch part of it. <laughs> yeah. It's just entertaining as hell. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this scene. I watched five minutes of this scene, because ten minutes of that scene. It was just it's it's so it shows the dichotomy that that Fox they can have a hard R-rated, violent, swearing, but kind of lighthearted. Yeah. And then they put this out mm-hmm. that they that they they think people are going to compare it when it's no, it's totally different. Violence and swearing and yeah, that's got those pieces. But it there was was there any humor in this movie at uh, all? Uh, Professor X pissing and and like yeah. a couple funny lines. Yeah, we'll come to dinner. I was like, if I was that family, I'm like, don't pick these people up. <laughs> this is going to end horribly for you. <laughs> and yeah. well, Professor X know better than to go to their house. I mean, come serious. on, well, he was like a senile lunatic. But was he though? Although, although I, I mean, no, but in this movie he was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although I keep expecting the Eric Lasalle's uh, character to come out and go, So glow! <laughs> <laughs> that, that scene was just, that was a rough one. I mean, the son getting butchered, the mother getting killed, the mm-hmm. dad. I was like, oh my God. Like, the whole entire time they're eating dinner, I'm like, what did I say to you? I'm like, these they're people good. are all going to die. Uh, like, <laughs> this, I can't enjoy this family scene because mm-hmm. this is going to be bad. Yeah. I'll say another part that was absolutely ridiculous. Coming from someone who has teenage boys, 
no teenage boy is going to give up their iPhone to some girl. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it for the night, honey, and, and give it back. And I'll be like, that's my phone. Like, you're not taking my phone. And why are you taking it out and putting it in your ear? <laughs> like, get, off, get off my phone. She wants my, this freak wants my phone. You know, that scene was kind of goofy. What do we think about Hugh Jackman's clone, X-24? I, he looked cool. I, it was nice to see. It was nice to see Hugh Jackman in like Wolverine Prime, but uh, has there ever of, been an X twenty four in the books? I don't think. I think it was supposed to be Albert. Albert was like the Wolverine clone, yeah. right? Because he had the cybernetic eye. They yeah. made sure they pointed that out. That's the first thing I thought was Albert. I thought it was a bad choice. I mean, it, like you said, it was cool seeing him like that. It's but cliche. It's cliche. Yeah, There's a lot of other villains. Other things. They could, yeah. I said, hell, you could even have brought Sabretooth back. Well, that's what mm-hmm. I. That's what I actually thought at first. I thought it was. I thought it was a, like a Sabretooth Wolverine hybrid. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe they had Sabretooth and he was still young and that enhanced them or something. Right. You know, yeah. put adamantium in his. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. adamantium claws or something would have been cool. That would have been a better than him just fighting a clone of himself, you know. Yeah. Actually, truthfully, the, the, the only the only thing I actually found, and this is bad, the only thing I actually found interesting in this movie was the portrayal of the driverless trucks. Yeah. The driverless semis and the driverless ra- that trains. That just beep and come real hard at you yeah. and almost kill you? <laughs> oh, and I, the whole time those horses were running across the road, I'm like, they're going to kill. I'm like, those horses, yeah. like, please, someone's going to die. Please don't show a yeah. horse being run they, over. They, they, spared, like, they, they spared the horses, though. Yeah. yeah. Every every human character in this movie was killed. I mean, everybody But, but, but Peter will be happy about mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was anybody that survived any interaction in that movie. I mean, I left and went to the bathroom... And, and they're like, you missed something. I'm like, what I miss? 85 more people get killed? They're like, no, basically. The only people that survived were the guys that he threw the keys for the limo to when he ditched it. Okay. He didn't <laughs> kill all those guys? He didn't kill no, those he guys. He was walking out of that yeah. scene. And the kids survived. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of them. There were some that... I don't, like, yeah. I don't, I don't think, think any of them died. Group. I think the whole Did group they? got yeah. away. And yeah. they away. How yeah. worthless were they with their powers, though, in helping? Yeah. Like, two of them I, used their powers. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I think they were... They talked about the nurse, the nurses there, and that they take care of that they took care of them, and the nurses were trying to humanize the kids yeah. when when the company was trying. And I can't remember his name now, but the company was trying to just create weapons, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of the kids took that to heart, especially when the nurses got them out. Mm-hmm. So I think the kids were just afraid to use their powers, and they were just legitimately afraid. Yeah. So that you know, you know, Laura obviously was a little badass. Um, Richter was okay, but even he, it took him a long time to well, use Well, and that's powers. the thing that I was a little confused on is I didn't see them training her to fight. I don't know why she was so good at fighting. I know they were, like, growing them to use her, and they showed you her cutting herself, and they showed you her. I didn't see a scene where they were, like, training her. Well, but th- th- that was when um, when they first when they first brought out X-24, the, uh, what's the guy's name? I can't remember. Donald Pierce? Donald, no, no. Or the doctor. The doctor. Yeah. The Let's doctor, call him the, the dead doctor, doctor. The doctor was talking about, well, we realized we couldn't grow aggression. We had to breed it. Okay. So the idea, I think the idea is that they were actually trying to trying to genetically make make X-23 okay. aggressive. So you think they, I get, I get the aggression part, but she, like, really knew how to fight. Yeah. You well, know what yeah. I mean? She was, like, ninja trained, like, the moves she was doing, like, the kicks and the spins right. and all that. Like, she really knew how to fight. It wasn't like she was, like, I'm just savage. She was spin kicking <laughs> and doing all those yeah. things. I mean, but the other thing, you know, is, as far as the, the, the usefulness of the other characters, I mean, for me, it was sort of like they, were, they, were, they might have been in all different gradients of power. Yeah. Or of, of, of visualization of their power. Yeah. Because of the you know, because of the different ages and how long that study went on. True. It just seemed like the rest of them had no clue how to fight, but Laura Right. No, you're right. Well, Laura, she would have been the most recent one too. Yeah, okay. Like, She's twenty three and yeah, twenty four yeah. is right after. Yeah. But like, Richter knew a little bit, you know, the one guy knew some stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And Poor maybe, little fat do, you, kid. do you think <laughs> possible? <laughs> do you think possibly now they try to make some movie with these kids? I think so. Like a new mutants. Well, we young know X-Men. we know they're bringing in Cable into Deadpool. Yeah, his name so, was on the phone booth. 
Yeah. Was I missed that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sam. I kept, Nathan's coming. I was trying to. I was trying to look for spoiler. Or, there was uh, all kinds Easter of stuff. Well, let's stuff, tell everybody but... that in the beginning of the movie, instead of an end credit, they have a Deadpool intro. Pre-credit. Because it would totally not make sense. Yeah. After the. Oh yeah, no that. Which, <laughs> by the way, was hilarious. It was that was the best part of the movie for me. Yeah. <laughs> even though you got to see Ryan, Ryan, or uh, Ryan's ass cheeks. Yeah, it was still funny, even though. Yeah. Him oh, changing. You can tell Saber that there was naked yeah. man. Him changing in a phone booth, playing Superman music, and <laughs> ready to save the day, and a guy just gets killed, and he sits down and eats whatever he the can. Eats his, eats yeah. his cherry Garcia. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. his groceries. But anyway, so so we know Cable's coming. That brings time travel into the picture. They are heavily. They're actually starting to cast an X Force movie. Yeah. So we know X Force is coming with the time travel aspect. We're going to see these kids again. We may see it old, not probably not the same actress. We're gonna see X twenty three again. Come back in time. Yeah, come back in time is God, older. More time travel. That's just what we need. Um, oh, but then we actually, may get to see Richter again. We're gonna see these at least the characters, if not these actors. But that makes sense. You start with a New Mutants movie, mm-hmm. let it morph into X Force. But the thing yeah. that they say all the time is people they have never really committed to Deadpool's X Men universe. Is even in the same universe as that one. No. Well, but they, but they 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 have the same, some of the same characters. They do. Yeah, it, they do. But they're not they're not because the Colossuses are different. All that's different, you know. But we've had how many different Colossuses in the regular X Men movies? You only had one. You had the guy that was him in the third movie. Was really I mean there was a scene of him in the second movie when he walks through the door and saves the one kid. Right. But he really debuts in, in the third one when he's Colossus. And then they see you see him in Days of Future Past. He's there teaching with Kitty. Yeah, they're, so I guess it is only the two. It's, it's yeah. him. And then the guy that's in the Deadpool movie, sure to hell ain't the same one. You know, yeah. I don't know what he is. So that's why <laughs> that's why I've always believed that that movie, that they have kept it uh, separate for maybe a possibility that they do some kind of crossover with that with Marvel. Either that or the concept that they didn't know if it was going to suck or not. True. And, and my theory now is, I think just because this is Hugh Jackman's last movie, this movie is going to make a shitload of money. But it's not going to be the fan success that they want. No. And they're going to use that as the excuse. Deadpool is the new Wolverine for the X Men universe. Yeah. And they're going to go forward with him, and he's going to be in Deadpool Two, X Force. Mm. He'll probably show up in New Mutants. Oh yeah, he's going to be. He's their yeah. guy. It would just would have been, and I've said this before, I really just would have liked to have seen a, a Wolverine movie. Like you said, we had a crappy Origins movie. You had his his story about his past for, you know, the Wolverine and his art piece and all that. And that had such I would, potential. I would have loved to have seen this in the next movie. Like like they ended it. I mean, why in that other movie when, they te- when you see the DVD features on it, the, the Asian girl that's with him hands him his him costume. It says, you need to be... The Wolverine. That's like how like the other alternate ending ends. He gives him that brown and yellow yeah. costume with the black and on it. Never use it. I would have loved to have seen this movie. Him fighting. He could have fought the Reavers, wearing that costume. Deadpool cameos. I mean, it would have yeah. been great. It would have been like comedy gold. It would have been a great superhero movie. You could have done R, and you didn't need all that extra shit in there. You know, and, mm-hmm. and it would have been much better for me to see that as a final movie than this, where it's just like God, this is <laughs> horrible. You know, yeah. Logan deserved to ride off into the sunset and be happy at the end of the uh, mm-hmm. movie after all the shit they put him through. Not mm-hmm. buried by some stupid lake near Canada with rocks all over him, and then she turned across into an X. Yeah. You know. So, moving on. Was this better than having the R rating, or do you think this movie was served better by having an R rating than trying to shoehorn it into a PG thirteen rating? I think it. I don't think it. I think the R rating was bad. It was. It was like this movie's rated R, so we're gonna. They went overboard to me. It actually, and I'm not a person that's bothered by violence. It was too much for me. There were so many times where I was like, oh. God, all right, all right, <laughs> through the eyes. I'm like, oh, God, in yeah. the neck. Uh, now, like, and then every time he kept getting stabbed, I'm like, is he dead yet? Like, oh, my God. Yeah, because he's not healing. Stabbing him in the back, and then there's another one. You know, every time they got near each other. Well, and then when he was in the doctor's office, they took his shirt off, and then his whole, like, chest yeah, was oh, gaping it was open. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely horrible. So I didn't agree. What do you two think? <coughs> well, sorry. I think an R rating was okay, but. 
whenever they extended the language and stuff to Professor X, which was totally out of character. Totally out of character. It was just dumb at that point. I don't care if he's old or whatever. Professor yeah. X didn't talk like that. Yeah, and he swore just as much as Wolverine did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If Everybody not more. Yeah. You know? It was just it's just, it was too much over the top. The violence was ridiculous. I mean, if you have an R rating, you have something that, you know, be creative with it. I mean, just the shots through the head was all, that's all they did. Yeah, yeah so we're going <laughs> to stab the shit out of heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, sorry, Lance. No, go ahead. So, I will say, I think an R rating would have, an R rating served the story better than a PG-13 rating mm-hmm. would have. But like you guys said, they took it way over the top. Way over the top. You know, one f bomb from Professor X, I could have said, "Oh, hey, he's an old man, whatever." Yeah. But the constant swearing from 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 Charles, yeah. uh, especially even after the scenes where like he's like, "Oh, we have to talk nice in front of her," and we're and, and this is family. We're in front of the couple and with their son, and then they close the door, and he's like. F and, and he just starts swearing like and like well, I don't get why he's talking like that <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. like mm-hmm. so I I I I think they took it over the top I think I mean this was way more violent than Deadpool Deadpool had the right amount yeah. the right ratio of of language and violence to comedy and and right. story yeah and, because the violence in Deadpool was bad but it was more slapstick it was than more slapstick yeah. yeah it and, was and the there wasn't language as much blood went and guts. along right. with the comedy yeah exactly and this. They they just took it to not another. They took it to ten levels. They took higher. it to mm-hmm. ten levels higher. Yeah. yeah, there was more blood and guts in this than like watching like a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like you know any way they could kill somebody, they were going through everything. I mean, you were getting gunshots to the head and and this. Well, and then the when when Laura shoots X twenty four at the end, like half his head was gone. Yeah, I know with the adamantium <laughs> bullet. I'll bring up an, sort of an alternate reason for the rated R movie, or mm. the rated R. What if they started out with rated R and they actually said, okay, this will allow us to take that comic book or that fairy tale part of comic books away. Mm-hmm. It'll allow us to be gritty. Mm. It'll allow us to be, you know, I almost think of it as like Marcel Marceau in a comic book or it's, you know, French fatalistic film noir type stuff. Mm-hmm. And this actually allowed them to do it, and and it also would give them a convenient reason to do it because they could say, well, kids aren't going to see this, so we can experiment with it a little bit, mm-hmm. and we're not going to potentially poison our future viewers. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing I don't get. I don't understand why Fox doesn't want superhero movies for the family with this stuff. Like, you could make a Wolverine, but kids would love to go see a Wolverine. But my kids would love to go see a Wolverine superhero movie. Or it's Wolverine being a superhero, doing cool action stuff, doing big blockbuster type things. They would love to go see that. I think it would make a ton of money. We might get it the next time around because you know they're going to reboot this character. Yeah. Well, I mean, if honestly, the way if the way it's going, they'll reboot this character, but it'll be Laura. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The next Wolverine movie will be the Wolverine with starring her with a female Wolverine because that's and what it is. Maybe the, she'll put on the outfit. That's what it, that's what it is in the comic. I mean, yeah. he, he's gone. I think they're trying to bury him as much as possible. I yeah, don't know. I can see that. And was it, was anybody else so confused by green juice makes your mutant power stronger, blue pills takes it away, <laughs> another shot yeah. subdues it. I was like, what pill? Well, what are all so these for, medications? For Charles, the medication was... The, the pills were suppressing seizures. So he had, like, they were saying, because at one point, Donald, before they, he asked him, is he Alzheimer's, ALS? Right. He had Lou Gehrig's disease. Because he, it was the most the most dangerous mind in the world is disintegrating. And so the, the blue pills, Did he have I Lou believe, Gehrig's disease or did he have Alzheimer's? I, well, he, he didn't seem to be Because Lou Gehrig's things. disease, you can't speak, you can't really move afterwards. You're still, yeah. you're still lucid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, well, that's Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, what? That's what he has. It's he's, ALS. He doesn't have Lou Gehrig's disease. It's, yeah, ALS. it's ALS. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Yes, he's the he's had it longer than any other human has ever had it. Okay. Um, but I I think it was for you know his mutant powers. He was but whatever, he was old. But, he had old man's the, disease. The blue pills <laughs> were supposed to suppress the seizures. The injection for Charles was when he was in a seizure, it brought the seizure under control. Okay. So it really wasn't supposed to dampen his power. It was just And then the green juice up, uh, amplifies your power for about 
two minutes. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> we were like, oh, like he's taking gonna, a five he's, hour energy. He's going to go, he's going to go full on old school Wolverine. That lasted like for two seconds. Yeah. And then he started, like his skin started turning gray. I was, he like, was limping going again. On with him? <laughs> well, if you think about it, if they were talking about it, it's, it's something to, to um, speed up your metabolism or speed up whatever or yeah. your, your healing yeah. factor or whatever your power happens to be. All right. Well, I think we're about ready. We've recovered everything just about. About ready for some movie reviews, movie ratings. Do you have something else? One more thing. Like the full force of the Reavers were going after Laura, but all these other like fifteen, twenty kids, or however many they were, they probably weren't that many, got to their safe house without any trouble whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody yeah. tried to stop them. No one tried to stop them. They're just going. Yeah, that just made no sense to me. Like, they, and they really, and I they think, didn't have help. <laughs> they really messed up the Reavers. They mm-hmm. gave them no identity. The Reavers were cool because there was. There was three on the one Donald Pierce, and then like three, two sets of three, because there was uh, like the three really robotic looking ones, and then mm-hmm. the three like military helmet yeah. looking ones. They had identities. They were like cool yeah. when he would fight them. They would regrow limbs, and it, mm-hmm. I would have much rather seen just that instead of yeah. a bunch of like copycats. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that would have actually, that would have actually pushed. The movie to actually emphasize the superpowers, not the action, the plot, the acting. Okay. Yeah. And that's not what this director apparently wanted to do. <laughs> it would have been. I would like to see some villains. Where I mean, you didn't even know his name was Donald Pierce to to, to, well, uh, right. to the business, business card. card. Yeah. yeah. It's the only time they referred to him by name. And then all the other ones they were they apparently just, named because they were in the credits as Bone Breaker and Pretty yeah, but, Boy. And but all. yeah, but what was Pretty Boy in the movie? Because well, I would say it was halfway through the movie before they even mentioned the word Reavers. Yeah. <laughs> Which, and I've always liked the Reavers, because I like the, the the 90s story with Wolverine, where he really feuds with the Reavers for a while, where he's on the run with Jubilee, and the X-Men are in Australia. They really put up a, a, a strong fight. They nail him to the X-Cross, and they do all Maybe that stuff. Maybe that's why I him. hated the Reavers so much. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you hated them why? I mean, as, as a character in the Marvel Universe, I've always hated the Reavers. Oh, really? And that's probably why, because you know they were just always put in as a malevolent force that, yeah. that really didn't even have... I mean, if you want to go all Dungeons and Dragons, they weren't lawful evil. They were just chaotic evil. They were chaotic evil. They yeah. were just evil for evil's sake. They, they were good for Wolverine, though, in there, because it was people that he could tear apart, and it wasn't like, you know, they would cut he would cut Pretty Boy's hands off, right. and then they would, like, grow new ones. You know, they were always well, kind of coming at him. And he could kill people without killing Kill people. without killing, right, exactly. Right. You could be a kid reading that comic and go, boy, these guys are relentless coming after Wolverine. But, like, he just chopped Pretty Boy's head off, but he's still talking, and he's right. not blood and gore, you know what I mean? You know, they were cool. But anyway, let's let's give some ratings and wrap right. this one up. We're going to go with uh, Brock and his baseball caps over there. All right. As a superhero movie, I will give it two logo-less baseball caps. Okay. Nondescript baseball caps. Nondescript, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but as an actual film... You're going to make me do two ratings? No, you're going to just do... <laughs> As an actual film, I'll give it four. Okay. Because it was, I mean, as an art piece, it was a good film. So I'm going to tie those into into one rating. I'm giving this a two and a half. Um, it gets 100% from film technicality, acting, cinematography, everything else. But I am frankly disappointed in Logan's last outing. Mm-hmm. So two and a half. There you go. Bald heads? <laughs> Blonde or a tan bald head? Tan, tan bald, bald heads? heads. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm sort of going to echo what Cheese said. You know, for me, the rating is more based on whether I liked it. Yes, it might be cinematic, but, you know, if, if it's if it's not going to be something I'm going to watch again, no. So it only gets one and a half bald heads. Actually, I'm going to join you. We're going to be on the same page this time. Wow. Ebony and Ivory, bald heads together. <laughs> break, out, a, break out the Paul McCartney break out and the Michael Paul Jackson. McCartney and Michael Jackson. I'm going to give it a uh, one and a half, too. So there you go. There you have it. Go see it for yourselves and let us know what you think. And as Ken would always say, like, share, subscribe, invite. Later. Bye. Bye.